All right, so it all begins with a scribble. So, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Abigail. Happy birthday to So, if you're wondering where I've been over the past month and a half, two months, the answer is I've been doing a lot. A lot. Um, one, my phone cr finally crapped out. And that revealed a whole lot to me. It's like, I don't think we realize how much we depend on something like that so my phone craps out i have like all of my writing on it i have all of my um songs and audio i just have so much stuff on it i have my logins i have my access to my shorts and things like that on youtube and <laughs> the phone craps out so i spend like four or five days with no phone because they're having to get something worked out and i realized in the middle of all that I really like not having a phone. I don't know if, you know, you feel the same way, but I recognize in that whole entire thing that I really like not having a phone. And so I just went without a phone for a little bit and I really enjoyed it. I was reading a lot, which is great. Um, yeah, I just started doing that. Um, and I felt like it was time to do another video and so I figured I'd plug back into it and see what's what. Um, another thing, which is probably the big announcement, is uh, I released two albums. Um, they're instrumentals, which is great. They're a lot of fun. Um, a lot of fun. But uh, they're perfect for the everyday life. I made them because I like to listen to them. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I put them on. I read. I sleep, I do yard work, I do all sorts of stuff listening to music that I've made and shared it with a few people and they were like, well, you might as well put it online and I was like, yep, yeah, might as well put it online. So we threw it online and it is available on all the streams, all the streams, and it is under AJR Ball. It's like 18 songs or something like that. Somewhere around an hour. Probably a little over an hour worth of instrumentals and music and things like that. It's very peaceful. Uh, I really enjoyed doing it. But I had to take probably a month and a half, two months to figure out how to do it. You know, learning all the programs and learning all that stuff is another art that just needs to be practiced. Um, yeah. I say this, and, and I hope you agree with me. Hope, hopefully, if not, you may agree with me after I say it. I believe that every person in the world is an artist. This is why I say that. If you have the ability to create, 
you are an artist. What separates a really good artist from a person who just kind of does it is one person just took the time to learn how to do it. That's all it really is. And so I would listen to things like Hans Zimmer, which again, he is on just a whole other level. Like I don't, that's Hans Zimmer to me is just the voice of God. <laughs> just, it's just the sound it's so beautiful, but it's recognizing he's no different than really anyone else in the world. He just took the time to pursue his passion. And by pursuing his passion, he became an incredible, incredible artist. Um, and so I just had to take some time and I'm still taking more time to learn all the different things. I'm not a very technical person. Like, again, I have multiple cameras here. This is a big deal. This is, this is intense for me. Um, but I have all these multiple cameras and I have to figure out how to edit and do all sorts of stuff. Just this right here. Being able to do that on a camera and, and edit it takes some time. Um, but it's a beautiful art and that's where I've been for the past month and a half two months is learning how to do all that stuff. I decided, and again, I know I already started this, but what I've been doing is I think I just stumbled across this where I'll find a little piece of paper and I'll just decide that I'm going to color on it. And then all of a sudden it turns into this little cool, very cool little thing. And they take like 15, 20 minutes to do. And so I figured I would do one of those for you today. Um, and yeah, just pass the time and talk about some stuff. Here we go, going in. It's like a big long time. Here, going in. Okay. find that like the art that I've been doing has gradually been just shifting um, or you you know you sort of become a little bit better at it you know because I've been practicing it we we're able to take a camping trip up to chimney rock which again I know I've probably said this before but if you don't know this the Last of the Mohegans, to me, is just one of the greatest films ever. I love that film so much. Um, it has a beauty to it. And I don't know if you know this, but there's a good portion of it, at least the end of the movie for sure, is filmed in a place called Chimney Rock, North Carolina. It's right there close to Lake Lure. It overlooks Lake Lure. Um, and so we took the kids on a camping trip with my aunt. She came to visit us for Halloween. And uh, we didn't know it was going to be that cold. Uh, but we had a blast. And I'll probably put a bunch of that footage here. Along with the music. Along with the music. So let me know what you think.
Yeah, so every year we do this thing. It's a big sort of party for the kids um, back there in Neverland. Uh, we call it Balloween. Um, I know some people are anti-Halloween, and some people want to make it a super religious thing, like, uh, it's Reformation Day, it's when Martin Luther attacked the 95 Thesis on the thing, and we should celebrate that and make it more about God. Um, I'm cool either way, it really doesn't bother me. Uh, if anything, we do Balloween to sort of just have fun, and dress up in costumes, and run around Neverland for a little bit, do a scavenger hunt. Which, last year wasn't that great, but this year, I think we killed it. I think we did a pretty good job, um, just because it wasn't so crazy. Um, and the kids had a blast, and yeah, I may put some of that footage here. That's cool. I don't know. If you don't like scary Halloween, Halloween stuff, then you can just maybe not watch the video. Joe's Ice Tea of UCLA. Quench your thirst, the Bruin way. There you go, flip it out. Following 2023. We're doing this. What does the pizza say when it comes alive? We come in peace, God. smelt it, you dealt it. That's what I always say. No need to hide a gift so true. Farting is fun and makes I people laugh. But be careful around the bonfire if one slips through. You know, it's funny, I have a really good case of ADHD, I don't know if I've said that in the past, but um, I have a really good case of it. I say it's a good case because it really is a beautiful gift, um, it's not some curse, you just have to sort of navigate through life a little bit differently. And so what I've done, just within this bar area, or office area, or creative space, whatever you want to call it. What I've done is I sort of have everything just kind of set up. So I have my music stuff over in the corner. I have a spot where I can sit and read. Um, I have my drawings here, and I got my painting stuff in the back. But I basically have it, writing is right here. Uh, but I have it set up to where anytime I get the itch to do anything like that creative, it's already set up, and I can go and engage in it for 30, 45 minutes, or maybe an hour. Sometimes it may stretch a little bit longer. But I, I'm able to go and engage in that for a little bit, 
And then when I'm done or I've, you know, I feel like I'm satisfied to a certain extent, I just stop and I move on to the next thing. I mean, I even have, I mean, it sounds funny, but my door has some windows in it here. And I just went ahead and took my magnetic dry erase markers and stuck them on there. And I literally just color on the window sometimes. Sometimes I'll do it for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. What it does is it gives me an outlet, regardless of how insignificant it may seem, it gives me an outlet. And at the same time, I'm able to just have this release and it sort of steadies me onto the next thing. And that sort of spreads out from this room to the rest of the property because I have a lot of projects to do, a lot. And they're not gonna get done tomorrow, but they're gonna get done when they get done setting it up to where I go through and I clean my shop and then I'm able to just get to my tools and everything is just there. I have another project for the tree house or I have another project for the garden or I have another project for just making a pen for my new dog um, who is something else. He is, he is a great Pyrenees and he is every bit of not listening as you could be. But I have everything set up for the amazing gift of ADHD. And it really, really helps me. Really, really helps me. I don't know, if you have ADHD, maybe it'll help you. Have things set up, little outlets here and there. You know, if you wanna read a book, you have it set up, perfect spot. It stays decently neat and clean to where you can just sit, open up a book, read a half a chapter, read a chapter, read two chapters, whatever it is. Or if you wanna make music, have a little station call it an ADHD station, a creative space station. And a creative space station. Uh, yeah, it reminds me. Uh, if you're wondering what I was for Halloween, I couldn't find my Gandalf outfit, but I had the Gandalf wig. And then I had a NASA suit, so I just decided to be a space wizard. And that led me to... Uh, the inspiration for my next album that I'm coming out with. It's another instrumental, but it's going to be called Space Wizard. And we're already working on the album art for it, which... Hold on, hold on. Back up, back up, back up, back oh up. Oh my back gosh. Up. Is that hold a treasure on. chest? Yeah, yeah. Wow, let's see what's inside. Oh it's my shot. God. Ah, oh my God. gosh. Oh, oh Another clue. clue. What the heck? Yeah, you make a space station, a creative space station, and you just release your art, whatever it is. And understand something. Yes, other people can enjoy your art and celebrate your art. They can, which is really cool. But art is for the artist. I know we've made it into something else and we've tried to market it and we've tried to do all this other stuff and you can and you can make an incredible career off of it. It's awesome. But as an artist, for me, don't get away from just creating because you have a heart to create. Release. You'll find that there is an immense amount of peace in being able to sit and scribble on a piece of paper for a little bit. That's just me. Could be wrong. But... Make art that you want to listen to. Make art that you want to see. Make art that you want to enjoy. And you'll never get dissatisfied with it. You may evolve and it may grow into something different. But as long as you don't shift from um, creating art for you, um, I don't feel like you'll ever get to that burned out state. Or that state where you don't feel adequate enough. I had to be honest with myself. Which really sucks. But I had to be honest with myself you know, about a year ago, maybe less than a year ago. I had to be honest with the fact that I was making art for other people. And I had lived most of my life 
creating art for other people. And I never felt satisfied in it. If anything, I felt inadequate. And if anything, I felt like it was never good enough for what they had in mind or what they, you know, thought it should be. So I let all that go. And for the first times, I guess a little bit less than a year ago, um, I just started making art for me. Like, what do I enjoy? kids hold them a little bit longer some of the best advice we ever got even though it doesn't seem like it sometimes you know our kids like to come and crawl in bed with us and it gets to the point where they take over a good bit of the bed and we had some friends I guess they're still friends but uh we were talking to her about it and she's, you know, she's got kids that are all grown up and they're pretty much all married. And we are telling her about it. She goes, can I just say this? My kids used to come and crawl in bed with me, cuddle with me and do all that other stuff. And as annoying as it can be sometimes, cherish it. Because when it's gone, it's gone. So if they want to come cuddle in bed with you, who cares what the books say? Let them cuddle. Because before long, they'll be out of the house and they'll be living lives of their own and those cuddles become more and more rare. But bless you guys and uh, make some art.